Chapter 11 How Cells Divide Concept Outline Section 11.1 Bacteria divide far more simply than do eukaryotes. Cell division in prokaryotes. Bacterial cells divide by splitting in two. Section 11.2 Chromosomes are highly ordered structures. Discovery of chromosomes. All eukaryotic cells contain chromosomes, but different organisms possess differing numbers of chromosomes. The structure of eukaryotic chromosomes. Proteins play an important role in packaging DNA in chromosomes. Section 11.3 Mitosis is a key phase of the cell cycle. Phases of the cell cycle. The cell cycle consists of three growth phases, a nuclear division phase, and a cytoplasmic division stage. Interphase, preparing for mitosis. In interphase, the cell grows, replicates its DNA, and prepares for cell division. Mitosis. In prophase, the chromosomes condense and microtubules attach sister chromosomes to opposite poles of the cell. In metaphase, chromosomes align along the center of the cell. In anaphase, the chromosomes separate, in telophase the spindle dissipates and the nuclear envelope reforms. Cytokinesis In cytokinesis, the cytoplasm separates into two roughly equal halves. Section 11.4 The cell cycle is carefully controlled. General strategy of cell cycle control At three points in the cell cycle, feedback from the cell determines whether the cycle will continue. Molecular Mechanisms of Cell Cycle Control Special proteins regulate the checkpoints of the cell cycle. Cancer and the Control of Cell Proliferation Cancer results from damage to genes encoding proteins that regulate the cell division cycle. All species of organisms, bacteria, alligators, the weeds in a lawn, grow and reproduce. From the smallest of creatures to the largest, all species produce offspring like themselves and pass on the hereditary information that makes them what they are. In this chapter, we begin our consideration of heredity with an examination of how cells reproduce, figure 11.1. The mechanism of cell reproduction and its biological consequences have changed significantly during the evolution of life on Earth. Section 11.1 Bacteria divide far more simply than do eukaryotes. Cell division in prokaryotes. In bacteria, which are prokaryotes and lack a nucleus, cell division consists of a simple procedure called binary fission, literally, splitting in half, in which the cell divides into two equal or nearly equal halves, figure 11.2. The genetic information, or genome, replicates early in the life of the cell. It exists as a single, circular, double-stranded DNA molecule. Fitting this DNA circle into the bacterial cell is a remarkable feat of packaging, fully stretched out, the DNA of a bacterium like Escherichia coli is about 500 times longer than the cell itself. The DNA circle is attached at one point to the cytoplasmic surface of the bacterial cell's plasma membrane. At a specific site on the DNA molecule called the replication origin, a battery of more than 22 different proteins begins the process of copying the DNA, figure 11.3. When these enzymes have proceeded all the way around the circle of DNA, the cell possesses two copies of the genome. These daughter genomes are attached side by side to the plasma membrane. The growth of a bacterial cell to about twice its initial size induces the onset of cell division. A wealth of recent evidence suggests that the two daughter chromosomes are actively partitioned during this process. As this process proceeds, the cell lays down new plasma membrane and cell wall materials in the zone between the attachment sites of the two daughter genomes. A new plasma membrane grows between the genomes, eventually, it reaches all the way into the center of the cell dividing it in two. Because the membrane forms between the two genomes, each new cell is assured of retaining one of the genomes. Finally, a new cell wall forms around the new membrane. The evolution of the eukaryotes introduced several additional factors into the process of cell division. Eukaryotic cells are much larger than bacteria, and their genomes contain much more DNA. 
eukaryotic DNA is contained in a number of linear chromosomes, whose organization is much more complex than that of the single, circular DNA molecules in bacteria. In chromosomes, DNA forms a complex with packaging proteins called histones and is wound into tightly condensed coils. Synopsis Bacteria divide by binary fission. Fission begins in the middle of the cell. An active partitioning process ensures that one genome will end up in each daughter cell. Section 11.2 Chromosomes are highly ordered structures. Discovery of chromosomes Chromosomes were first observed by the German embryologist Walther Fleming in 1882, while he was examining the rapidly dividing cells of salamander larvae. When Fleming looked at the cells through what would now be a rather primitive light microscope, he saw minute threads within their nuclei that appeared to be dividing lengthwise. Fleming called their division mitosis, based on the Greek word mitos, meaning thread. Chromosome number Since their initial discovery, chromosomes have been found in the cells of all eukaryotes examined. Their number may vary enormously from one species to another. A few kinds of organisms, such as the Australian ant Myrmecia, the plant Haplopappus gracilis, a relative of the sunflower that grows in North American deserts, and the fungus Penicillium, have only one pair of chromosomes, while some ferns have more than 500 pairs. Table 11.1. Most eukaryotes have between 10 and 50 chromosomes in their body cells. Human cells each have 46 chromosomes, consisting of 23 nearly identical pairs. Figure 11.4. Each of these 46 chromosomes contains hundreds or thousands of genes that play important roles in determining how a person's body develops and functions. For this reason, possession of all the chromosomes is essential to survival. Humans missing even one chromosome, a condition called monosomy, do not survive embryonic development in most cases. Nor does the human embryo develop properly with an extra copy of any one chromosome, a condition called trisomy. For all but a few of the smallest chromosomes, trisomy is fatal, and even in those few cases, serious problems result. Individuals with an extra copy of the very small chromosome 21, for example, develop more slowly than normal and are mentally retarded, a condition called Down syndrome. Synopsis All eukaryotic cells store their hereditary information in chromosomes, but different kinds of organisms utilize very different numbers of chromosomes to store this information. The Structure of Eukaryotic Chromosomes In the centuries since discovery of chromosomes, we have learned a great deal about their structure and composition. Composition of Chromatin Chromosomes are composed of chromatin, a complex of DNA and protein, most are about 40% DNA and 60% protein. A significant amount of RNA is also associated with chromosomes because chromosomes are the sites of RNA synthesis. The DNA of a chromosome is one very long, double-stranded fiber that extends unbroken through the entire length of the chromosome. A typical human chromosome contains about 140 million, 1 1.4 by 108, nucleotides in its DNA. The amount of information one chromosome contains would fill about 280 printed books of 1,000 pages each, if each nucleotide corresponded to a word and each page had about 500 words on it. Furthermore, if the strand of DNA from a single chromosome were laid out in a straight line, it would be about 5 centimeters, 2 inches, long. Fitting such a strand into a nucleus is like cramming a string the length of a football field into a baseball and that's only one of 46 chromosomes. In the cell, however, the DNA is coiled, allowing it to fit into a much smaller space than would otherwise be possible. Chromosome coiling. How can this long DNA fiber coil so tightly? If we gently disrupt a eukaryotic nucleus and examine the DNA with an electron microscope, we find that it resembles a string of beads, figure 11.5. Every 200 nucleotides, the DNA duplex is coiled around a core of eight histone proteins, forming a complex known as a nucleosome. Unlike most proteins, which have an overall negative charge, histones are positively charged, due to an abundance of the basic amino acids arginine and lysine. 
They are thus strongly attracted to the negatively charged phosphate groups of the DNA. The histone cores thus act as magnetic forms that promote and guide the coiling of the DNA. Further coiling occurs when the string of nucleosomes wraps up into higher order coils called supercoils. Highly condensed portions of the chromatin are called heterochromatin. Some of these portions remain permanently condensed, so that their DNA is never expressed. The remainder of the chromosome, called euchromatin, is condensed only during cell division, when compact packaging facilitates the movement of the chromosomes. At all other times, euchromatin is present in an open configuration, and its genes can be expressed. The way chromatin is packaged when the cell is not dividing is not well understood beyond the level of nucleosomes and is a topic of intensive research. Chromosome karyotypes Chromosomes may differ widely in appearance. They vary in size, staining properties, the location of the centromere, a constriction found on all chromosomes, the relative length of the two arms on either side of the centromere, and the positions of constricted regions along the arms. The particular array of chromosomes that an individual possesses is called its karyotype, figure 11.6. Karyotypes show marked differences among species and sometimes even among individuals of the same species. To examine a human karyotype, investigators collect a cell sample from blood, amniotic fluid, or other tissue and add chemicals that induce the cells in the sample to divide. Later, they add other chemicals to stop cell division at a stage when the chromosomes are most condensed and thus most easily distinguished from one another. The cells are then broken open in their contents, including the chromosomes, spread out and stained. To facilitate the examination of the karyotype, the chromosomes are usually photographed, and the outlines of the chromosomes are cut out of the photograph and arranged in order, see figure 11.6. How many chromosomes are in a cell? With the exception of the gametes, eggs or sperm, and a few specialized tissues, every cell in a human body is diploid, 2n. This means that the cell contains two nearly identical copies of each of the 23 types of chromosomes, for a total of 46 chromosomes. The haploid, 1N, gametes contain only one copy of each of the 23 chromosome types, while certain tissues have unusual numbers of chromosomes, many liver cells, for example, have two nuclei, while mature red blood cells have no nuclei at all. The two copies of each chromosome in body cells are called homologous chromosomes, or homologs, Greek homologia, agreement. Before cell division, each homolog replicates, producing two identical sister chromatids joined at the centromere, a condensed area found on all eukaryotic chromosomes, figure 11.7. Hence, as cell division begins, a human body cell contains a total of 46 replicated chromosomes, each composed of two sister chromatids joined by one centromere. The cell thus contains 46 centromeres and 92 chromatids, two sister chromatids for each of two homologs for each of 23 chromosomes. The cell is said to contain 46 chromosomes rather than 92 because, by convention, the number of chromosomes is obtained by counting centromeres. Synopsis Eukaryotic genomes are larger and more complex than those of bacteria. Eukaryotic DNA is packaged tightly into chromosomes, enabling it to fit inside cells. Haploid cells contain one set of chromosomes, while diploid cells contain two sets. Section 11.3 Mitosis is a key phase of the cell cycle. Phases of the cell cycle the increased size and more complex organization of eukaryotic genomes over those of bacteria required radical changes in the process by which the two replicas of the genome are partitioned into the daughter cells during cell division. This division process is diagrammed as a cell cycle, consisting of five phases, figure 11.8. The five phases. G1 is the primary growth phase of the cell. For many organisms, this encompasses the major portion of the cell's lifespan S is the phase in which the cell synthesizes a replica of the genome. G2 is the second growth phase, in which preparations are made for genomic separation. During this phase, mitochondria and other organelles replicate, 
chromosomes condense, and microtubules begin to assemble at a spindle. G1, S, and G2 together constitute interphase, the portion of the cell cycle between cell divisions. M is the phase of the cell cycle in which the microtubular apparatus assembles, binds to the chromosomes, and moves the sister chromatids apart. Called mitosis, this process is the essential step in the separation of the two daughter genomes. We will discuss mitosis as it occurs in animals and plants, where the process does not vary much, it is somewhat different among fungi and some protists. Although mitosis is a continuous process, it is traditionally subdivided into four stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. C is the phase of the cell cycle when the cytoplasm divides, creating two daughter cells. This phase is called cytokinesis. In animal cells, the microtubule spindle helps position a contracting ring of actin that constricts like a drawstring to pinch the cell in two. In cells with a cell wall, such as plant cells, a plate forms between the dividing cells. Duration of the cell cycle the time it takes to complete a cell cycle varies greatly among organisms. Cells in growing embryos can complete their cell cycle in under 20 minutes. The shortest known animal nuclear division cycles occur in fruit fly embryos, 8 minutes. Cells such as these simply divide their nuclei as quickly as they can replicate their DNA, without cell growth. Half of the cycle is taken up by S, half by M, and essentially none by G1 or G2. Because mature cells require time to grow, most of their cycles are much longer than those of embryonic tissue. Typically, a dividing mammalian cell completes its cell cycle in about 24 hours, but some cells, like certain cells in the human liver, have cell cycles lasting more than a year. During the cycle, growth occurs throughout the G1 and G2 phases, referred to as gap phases, as they separate S from M, as well as during the S phase. The M phase takes only about an hour, a small fraction of the entire cycle. Most of the variation in the length of the cell cycle from one organism or tissue to the next occurs in the G1 phase. Cells often pause in G1 before DNA replication and enter a resting state called G0 phase, they may remain in this phase for days to years before resuming cell division. At any given time, most of the cells in an animal's body are in G0 phase. Some, such as muscle and nerve cells, remain there permanently, others, such as liver cells, can resume G1 phase in response to factors released during injury. Synopsis Most eukaryotic cells repeat a process of growth and division referred to as the cell cycle. The cycle can vary in length from a few minutes to several years. Interphase, preparing for mitosis the events that occurred during interphase, made up of the G1, S, and G2 phases, are very important for the successful completion of mitosis. During G1, cells undergo the major portion of their growth. During the S phase, each chromosome replicates to produce two sister chromatids, which remain attached to each other at the centromere. The centromere is a point of constriction on the chromosome containing a specific DNA sequence to which is bound a disk of protein called a kinetochore. This disk functions as an attachment site for fibers that assist in cell division, figure 11.9. Each chromosome centromere is located at a characteristic site. The cell grows throughout interphase. The G1 and G2 segments of interphase are periods of active growth, when proteins are synthesized and cell organelles produced. The cell's DNA replicates only during the S phase of the cell cycle. After the chromosomes have replicated in S phase, they remain fully extended and uncoiled. This makes them invisible under the light microscope. In G2 phase, they begin the long process of condensation, coiling ever more tightly. Special motor proteins are involved in the rapid final condensation of the chromosomes that occurs early in mitosis. Also during G2 phase, the cells begin to assemble the machinery they will later use to move the chromosomes to opposite poles of the cell. In animal cells, a pair of microtubule organizing centers called centrioles replicate. All eukaryotic cells undertake an extensive synthesis of tubulin, 
the protein of which microtubules are formed. Synopsis Interphase is that portion of the cell cycle in which the chromosomes are invisible under the light microscope because they are not yet condensed. It includes the G1, S, and G2 phases. In the G2 phase, the cell mobilizes its resources for cell division. Mitosis Prophase, formation of the mitotic apparatus. When the chromosome condensation initiated in G2 phase reaches the point at which individual condensed chromosomes first become visible with the light microscope, the first stage of mitosis, prophase, has begun. The condensation process continues throughout prophase, consequently, some chromosomes that start prophase as minute threads appear quite bulky before its conclusion. Ribosomal RNA synthesis ceases when the portion of the chromosome bearing the rRNA genes is condensed. Assembling the spindle apparatus The assembly of the microtubular apparatus that will later separate the sister chromatids also continues during prophase. In animal cells, the two centriole pairs formed during G2 phase begin to move apart early in prophase, forming between them an axis of microtubules referred to as spindle fibers. By the time the centrioles reach the opposite poles of the cell, they have established a bridge of microtubules called the spindle apparatus between them. In plant cells, a similar bridge of microtubular fibers forms between opposite poles of the cell, although centrioles are absent in plant cells. During the formation of the spindle apparatus, the nuclear envelope breaks down and the endoplasmic reticulum reabsorbs its components. At this point, then, the microtubular spindle fibers extend completely across the cell, from one pole to the other. Their orientation determines the plane in which the cell will subsequently divide, through the center of the cell at right angles to the spindle apparatus. In animal cell mitosis, the centrioles extend a radial array of microtubules toward the plasma membrane when they reach the poles of the cell. This arrangement of microtubules is called an aster. Although the aster's function is not fully understood, it probably braces the centrioles against the membrane and stiffens the point of microtubular attachment during the retraction of the spindle. Plant cells, which have rigid cell walls, do not form asters. Linking sister chromatids to opposite poles. Each chromosome possesses two kinetochores, one attached to the centromere region of each sister chromatid, see figure 11.9. As prophase continues, a second group of microtubules appears to grow from the poles of the cell toward the centromeres. These microtubules connect the kinetochores on each pair of sister chromatids to the two poles of the spindle. Because microtubules extending from the two poles attach to opposite sides of the centromere, they attach one sister chromatid to one pole and the other sister chromatid to the other pole. This arrangement is absolutely critical to the process of mitosis. Any mistakes in microtubule positioning can be disastrous. The attachment of the two sides of a centromere to the same pole, for example, leads to a failure of the sister chromatids to separate, so that they end up in the same daughter cell. Metaphase, alignment of the centromeres. The second stage of mitosis, metaphase, is the phase where the chromosomes align in the center of the cell. When viewed with a light microscope, the chromosomes appear to array themselves in a circle along the inner circumference of the cell, as the equator girdles the earth, figure 11.10. An imaginary plane perpendicular to the axis of the spindle that passes through this circle is called the metaphase plate. The metaphase plate is not an actual structure, but rather an indication of the future axis of cell division. Positioned by the microtubules attached to the kinetochores of their centromeres, all of the chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate, figure 11.11. .11. At this point, which marks the end of metaphase, their centromeres are neatly arrayed in a circle, equidistant from the two poles of the cell, with microtubules extending back towards the opposite poles of the cell in an arrangement called a spindle because of its shape. Anaphase and telophase separation of the chromatids and reformation of the nuclei. Of all the stages of mitosis, anaphase is the shortest and the most beautiful to watch. It starts when the centromeres divide. Each centromere splits in two, freeing the two sister chromatids from each other. The centromeres of all the chromosomes separate simultaneously, 
but the mechanism that achieves this synchrony is not known. Freed from each other, the sister chromatids are pulled rapidly toward the poles to which their kinetochores are attached. In the process, two forms of movement take place simultaneously, each driven by microtubules. First, the poles move apart as microtubular spindle fibers physically anchored to opposite poles slide past each other, away from the center of the cell, figure 11.12. Because another group of microtubules attach the chromosomes to the poles, the chromosomes move apart, too. If a flexible membrane surrounds the cell, it becomes visibly elongated. Second, the centromeres move toward the poles as the microtubules that connect them to the poles shorten. This shortening process is not a contraction, the microtubules do not get any thicker. Instead, Tubulin subunits are removed from the kinetochore ends of the microtubules by the organizing center. As more subunits are removed, the chromatid-bearing microtubules are progressively disassembled, and the chromatids are pulled ever closer to the poles of the cell. When the sister chromatids separate in anaphase, the accurate partitioning of the replicated genome, the essential element of mitosis, is complete. In telophase, the spindle apparatus disassembles, as the microtubules are broken down into tubulin monomers that can be used to construct the cytoskeletons of the daughter cells. A nuclear envelope forms around each set of sister chromatids, which can now be called chromosomes because each has its own centromere. The chromosomes soon begin to uncoil into the more extended form that permits gene expression. One of the early group of genes expressed are the rRNA genes, resulting in the reappearance of the nucleolus. Synopsis. During prophase, microtubules attach the centromeres joining pairs of sister chromatids to opposite poles of the spindle apparatus. During metaphase, each chromosome is drawn to a ring along the inner circumference of the cell by the microtubules extending from the centromere to the two poles of the spindle apparatus. During anaphase, the poles of the cell are pushed apart by microtubular sliding, and the sister chromatids are drawn to opposite poles by the shortening of the microtubules attached to them. During telophase, the spindle is disassembled, nuclear envelopes are re-established, and the normal expression of genes present in the chromosomes is reinitiated. Cytokinesis Mitosis is complete at the end of telophase. The eukaryotic cell has partitioned its replicated genome into two nuclei positioned at opposite ends of the cell. While mitosis was going on, the cytoplasmic organelles, including mitochondria and chloroplasts, if present, were reassorted to areas that will separate and become the daughter cells. The replication of organelles takes place before cytokinesis, often in the S or G2 phase. Cell division is still not complete at the end of mitosis, however, because the division of the cell proper has not yet begun. The phase of the cell cycle when the cell actually divides is called cytokinesis. It generally involves the cleavage of the cell into roughly equal halves. Cytokinesis in animal cells In animal cells and the cells of all other eukaryotes that lack cell walls, cytokinesis is achieved by means of a constricting belt of actin filaments. As these filaments slide past one another, the diameter of the belt decreases, pinching the cell and creating a cleavage furrow around the cell's circumference, figure 11.13a. As constriction proceeds, the furrow deepens until it eventually slices all the way into the center of the cell. At this point, the cell is divided in two, figure 11.13b. Cytokinesis in plant cells. Plant cells possess a cell wall far too rigid to be squeezed in two by actin filaments. Instead, these cells assemble membrane components in their interior, at right angles to the spindle apparatus, figure 11.14. This expanding membrane partition, called a cell plate, continues to grow outward until it reaches the interior surface of the plasma membrane and fuses with it, effectively dividing the cell in two. Cellulose is then laid down on the new membranes, creating two new cell walls. The space between the daughter cells becomes impregnated with pectins and is called a middle lamella. Cytokinesis in fungi and protists In fungi and some groups of protists, the nuclear membrane does not dissolve and, as a result, all the events of mitosis occurs entirely within the nucleus. 
Only after mitosis is complete in these organisms does the nucleus then divide into two daughter nuclei, and one nucleus goes to each daughter cell during cytokinesis. This separate nuclear division phase of the cell cycle does not occur in plants, animals, or most protists. After cytokinesis in any eukaryotic cell, the two daughter cells contain all of the components of a complete cell. While mitosis ensures that both daughter cells contain a full complement of chromosomes, no similar mechanism ensures that organelles such as mitochondria and chloroplasts are distributed equally between the daughter cells. However, as long as some of each organelle are present in each cell, the organelles can replicate to reach the number appropriate for that cell. Synopsis Cytokinesis is the physical division of the cytoplasm of a eukaryotic cell into two daughter cells. A vocabulary of cell division. Binary fission. Asexual reproduction of a cell by division into two equal or nearly equal parts. Bacteria divide by binary fission. Centromere. A constricted region of a chromosome about 220 nucleotides in length, composed of highly repeated DNA sequences, satellite DNA. During mitosis, the centromere joins the two sister chromatids and is the site to which the kinetochores are attached. Chromatid One of the two copies of a replicated chromosome, joined by a single centromere to the other strand. Chromatin The complex of DNA and proteins of which eukaryotic chromosomes are composed. Chromosome The structure within cells that contains the genes. In eukaryotes, it consists of a single linear DNA molecule associated with proteins. The DNA is replicated during S phase, and the replicas separated during M phase. Cytokinesis Division of the cytoplasm of a cell after nuclear division. Euchromatin The portion of a chromosome that is extended except during cell division, and from which RNA is transcribed. Heterochromatin the portion of a chromosome that remains permanently condensed and, therefore, is not transcribed into RNA. Most centromere regions are heterochromatic. Homologs Homologous chromosomes, in diploid cells, one of a pair of chromosomes that carry equivalent genes. Kinetochore a disc of protein bound to the centromere and attached to microtubules during mitosis, linking each chromatid to the spindle apparatus. Microtubule. A hollow cylinder, about 25 nanometers in diameter, composed of subunits of the protein tubulin. Microtubules lengthen by the addition of tubulin subunits to their ends and shorten by the removal of subunits. Mitosis. Nuclear division in which replicated chromosomes separate to form two genetically identical daughter nuclei. When accompanied by cytokinesis, it produces two identical daughter cells. Nucleosome. The basic packaging unit of eukaryotic chromosomes, in which the DNA molecule is wound around a cluster of histone proteins. Chromatin is composed of long strings of nucleosomes that resemble beads on a string. Section 11.4. The cell cycle is carefully controlled. General strategy of cell cycle control. The events of the cell cycle are coordinated in much the same way in all eukaryotes. The control system human cells utilize first evolved among the protists over a billion years ago, today, it operates in essentially the same way in fungi as it does in humans. The goal of controlling any cyclic process is to adjust the duration of the cycle to allow sufficient time for all events to occur. In principle, a variety of methods can achieve this goal. For example, an internal clock can be employed to allow adequate time for each phase of the cycle to be completed. This is how many organisms control their daily activity cycles. The disadvantage of using such a clock to control the cell cycle is that it is not very flexible. One way to achieve a more flexible and sensitive regulation of a cycle is simply to let the completion of each phase of the cycle trigger the beginning of the next phase, as a runner passing a baton starts the next leg in a relay race. Until recently, biologists thought this type of mechanism controlled the cell division cycle. However, we now know that eukaryotic cells employ a separate, 
centralized controller to regulate the process, at critical points in the cell cycle, further progress depends upon a central set of go-slash-no-go switches that are regulated by feedback from the cell. This mechanism is the same one engineers use to control many processes. For example, the furnace that heats a home in the winter typically goes through a daily heating cycle. When the daily cycle reaches the morning, turn on, checkpoint, sensors report whether the house temperature is below the set point, for example, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If it is, the thermostat triggers the furnace, which warms the house. If the house is already at least that warm, the thermostat does not start up the furnace. Similarly, the cell cycle has key checkpoints where feedback signals from the cell about its size and the condition of its chromosomes can either trigger subsequent phases of the cycle or delay them to allow more time for the current phase to be completed. Architecture of the control system Three principal checkpoints control the cell cycle in eukaryotes, figure 11.15. Cell growth is assessed at the G1 checkpoint. Located near the end of G1, just before entry into S phase, this checkpoint makes the key decision of whether the cell should divide, delay division, or enter a resting stage, figure 11.16. In yeasts, where researchers first studied this checkpoint, it is called start. If conditions are favorable for division, the cell begins to copy its DNA, initiating S phase. The G1 checkpoint is where the more complex eukaryotes typically arrest the cell cycle if environmental conditions make cell division impossible, or if the cell passes into G0 for an extended period. The success of DNA replication is assessed at the G2 checkpoint. The second checkpoint, which occurs at the end of G2, triggers the start of M phase. If this checkpoint is passed, the cell initiates the many molecular processes that signal the beginning of mitosis. Mitosis is assessed at the M checkpoint. Occurring at metaphase, the third checkpoint triggers the exit from mitosis and cytokinesis and the beginning of G1. Synopsis The cell cycle is controlled at three checkpoints. Molecular mechanisms of cell cycle control Exactly how does a cell achieve central control of the division cycle? The basic mechanism is quite simple. A set of proteins sensitive to the condition of the cell interact at the checkpoints to trigger the next events in the cycle. Two key types of proteins participate in this interaction, cyclin-dependent protein kinases and cyclins, figure 11.17. The cyclin control system. Cyclin-dependent protein kinases, CDKs, are enzymes that phosphorylate, add phosphate groups to, the serine and threonine amino acids of key cellular enzymes and other proteins. At the G2 checkpoint, for example, CDKs phosphorylate histones, nuclear membrane filaments, and the microtubule-associated proteins that form the mitotic spindle. Phosphorylation of these components of the cell division machinery initiates activities that carry the cycle past the checkpoint into mitosis. Cyclins are proteins that bind to CDKs, enabling the CDKs to function as enzymes. Cyclins are so named because they are destroyed and resynthesized during each turn of the cell cycle, figure 11.18. Different cyclins regulate the G1 and G2 cell cycle checkpoints. The G2 checkpoint. During G2, the cell gradually accumulates G2 cyclin, also called mitotic cyclin. This cyclin binds to CDK to form a complex called MPF, mitosis promoting factor. At first, MPF is not active in carrying the cycle past the G2 checkpoint. But eventually, other cellular enzymes phosphorylate and so activate a few molecules of MPF. These activated MPFs in turn increase the activity of the enzymes that phosphorylate MPF, setting up a positive feedback that leads to a very rapid increase in the cellular concentration of activated MPF. When the level of activated MPF exceeds the threshold necessary to trigger mitosis, G2 phase ends. MPF sows the seeds of its own destruction. The length of time the cell spends in M phase is determined by the activity of MPF, for one of its many functions is to activate proteins that destroy cyclin. As mitosis proceeds to the end of metaphase, CDK levels stay relatively constant, 
but increasing amounts of G2 cyclin are degraded, causing progressively less MPF to be available and so initiating the events that end mitosis. After mitosis, the gradual accumulation of new cyclin starts the next turn of the cell cycle. The G1 checkpoint. The G1 checkpoint is thought to be regulated in a similar fashion. In unicellular eukaryotes such as yeasts, the main factor triggering DNA replication is cell size. Yeast cells grow and divide as rapidly as possible, and they make the start decision by comparing the volume of cytoplasm to the size of the genome. As a cell grows, its cytoplasm increases in size, while the amount of DNA remains constant. Eventually a threshold ratio is reached that promotes the production of cyclins and thus triggers the next round of DNA replication and cell division. Controlling the cell cycle in multicellular eukaryotes. The cells of multicellular eukaryotes are not free to make individual decisions about cell division, as yeast cells are. The body's organization cannot be maintained without severely limiting cell proliferation, so that only certain cells divide, and only at appropriate times. The way that cells inhibit individual growth of other cells is apparent in mammalian cells growing in tissue culture, a single layer of cells expands over a culture plate until the growing border of cells comes into contact with neighboring cells, and then the cells stop dividing. If a sector of cells is cleared away, Neighboring cells rapidly refill that sector and then stop dividing again. How are cells able to sense the density of the cell culture around them? Each growing cell apparently binds minute amounts of positive regulatory signals called growth factors, proteins that stimulate cell division, such as MPF. When neighboring cells have used up what little growth factor is present, not enough is left to trigger cell division in any one cell. Growth factors and the cell cycle. As you may recall from Chapter 7, Cell-Cell Interactions, growth factors work by triggering intracellular signaling systems. Fibroblasts, for example, possess numerous receptors on their plasma membranes for one of the first growth factors to be identified, platelet-derived growth factor, PDGF. When PDGF binds to a membrane receptor, it initiates an amplifying chain of internal cell signals that stimulate cell division. PDGF was discovered when investigators found that fibroblasts would grow and divide in tissue culture only if the growth medium contained blood serum, the liquid that remains after blood clots, blood plasma, blood from which the cells have been removed without clotting, would not work. The researchers hypothesized that platelets in the blood clots were releasing into the serum one or more factors required for fibroblast growth. Eventually, they isolated such a factor and named it PDGF. Growth factors such as PDGF override cellular controls that otherwise inhibit cell division. When a tissue is injured, a blood clot forms and the release of PDGF triggers neighboring cells to divide, helping to heal the wound. Only a tiny amount of PDGF, approximately 10 to the negative 10 moles, is required to stimulate cell division. Characteristics of growth factors over 50 different proteins that function as growth factors have been isolated, Table 11.2 lists a few, and more undoubtedly exist. A specific cell surface receptor recognizes each growth factor, its shape fitting that growth factor precisely. When the growth factor binds with its receptor, the receptor reacts by triggering events within the cell, Figure 11.19. The cellular selectivity of a particular growth factor depends upon which target cells bear its unique receptor. Some growth factors, like PDGF and epidermal growth factor EGF, affect a broad range of cell types, while others affect only specific types. For example, nerve growth factor NGF, promotes the growth of certain classes of neurons, and erythropoietin triggers cell division in red blood cell precursors. Most animal cells need a combination of several different growth factors to overcome the various controls that inhibit cell division. The G0 phase. If cells are deprived of appropriate growth factors, they stop at the G1 checkpoint of the cell cycle. With their growth and division arrested, they remain in the G0 phase, as we discussed earlier. This non-growing state is distinct from the interphase stages of the cell cycle, G1, S, and G2. 
It is the ability to enter G0 that accounts for the incredible diversity seen in the length of the cell cycle among different tissues. Epithelial cells lining the gut divide more than twice a day, constantly renewing the lining of the digestive tract. By contrast, liver cells divide only once every year or two, spending most of their time in G0 phase. Mature neurons and muscle cells usually never leave G0. Synopsis Two groups of proteins, cyclins and CDKs, interact to regulate the cell cycle. Cells also receive protein signals called growth factors that affect cell division. Cancer and the control of cell proliferation. The unrestrained, uncontrolled growth of cells, called cancer, is addressed more fully in Chapter 18. However, cancer certainly deserves mention in a chapter on cell division, as it is essentially a disease of cell division, a failure of cell division control. Recent work has identified one of the culprits. Working independently, cancer scientists have repeatedly identified what has proven to be the same gene. Officially dubbed P53, researchers italicize the gene symbol to differentiate it from the protein, this gene plays a key role in the G1 checkpoint of cell division. The gene's product, the P53 protein, monitors the integrity of DNA, checking that it is undamaged. If the P53 protein detects damaged DNA, it halts cell division and stimulates the activity of special enzymes to repair the damage. Once the DNA has been repaired, P53 allows cell division to continue. In cases where the DNA is irreparable, P53 then directs the cell to kill itself, activating an apoptosis, cell suicide, program, see Chapter 17 for a discussion of apoptosis. By halting division in damaged cells, P53 prevents the development of many mutated cells, and it is therefore considered a tumor suppressor gene, even though its activities are not limited to cancer prevention. Scientists have found that P53 is entirely absent or damaged beyond use in the majority of cancerous cells they have examined. It is precisely because P53 is non-functional that these cancer cells are able to repeatedly undergo cell division without being halted at the G1 checkpoint, figure 11.20. To test this, scientists administered healthy P53 protein to rapidly dividing cancer cells in a petri dish, the cells soon ceased dividing and died. Scientists at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine have further reported that cigarette smoke causes mutations in the P53 gene. This study, published in 1995, reinforced the strong link between smoking and cancer described in Chapter 18. Growth Factors and Cancer how do growth factors influence the cell cycle? As you have seen, there are two different approaches, one positive and the other negative. Proto-oncogenes PDGF and many other growth factors utilize the positive approach, stimulating cell division. They trigger passage through the G1 checkpoint by aiding the formation of cyclins and so activating genes that promote cell division. Genes that normally stimulate cell division are sometimes called proto-oncogenes because mutations that cause them to be overexpressed or hyperactive convert them into oncogenes, Greek onco, cancer, leading to the excessive cell proliferation that is characteristic of cancer. Even a single mutation, creating a heterozygote, can lead to cancer if the other cancer-preventing genes are non-functional. Geneticists, using Mendel's terms, call such mutations of proto-oncogenes dominant. Some 30 different proto-oncogenes are known. Some act very quickly after stimulation by growth factors. Among the most intensively studied of these are MYC, FOS, and JUNE, all of which cause unrestrained cell growth and division when they are overexpressed. In a normal cell, the MYC proto-oncogene appears to be important in regulating the G1 checkpoint. Cells in which MYC expression is prevented will not divide, even in the presence of growth factors. A critical activity of MYC and other genes in this group of immediately responding proto-oncogenes is to stimulate a second group of delayed response genes, including those that produce cyclins and CDK proteins, figure 11.21. Tumor suppressor genes. Other growth factors utilize a negative approach to cell cycle control. 
They block passage through the G1 checkpoint by preventing cyclins from binding to CDK, thus inhibiting cell division. Genes that normally inhibit cell division are called tumor suppressor genes. When mutated, they can also lead to unrestrained cell division, but only if both copies of the gene are mutant. Hence, these cancer-causing mutations are recessive. The most thoroughly understood of the tumor suppressor genes is the retinoblastoma, RB, gene. This gene was originally cloned from children with a rare form of eye cancer inherited as a recessive trait, implying that the normal gene product was a cancer suppressor that helped keep cell division in check. The RB gene encodes a protein present in ample amounts within the nucleus. This protein interacts with many key regulatory proteins of the cell cycle, but how it does so depends upon its state of phosphorylation. In G0 phase, the RB protein is dephosphorylated. In this state, it binds to and ties up a set of regulatory proteins, like MYC and FOS, needed for cell proliferation, blocking their action and so inhibiting cell division, see figure 11.19. When phosphorylated, the RB protein releases its captive regulatory proteins, freeing them to act and so promoting cell division. Growth factors lessen the inhibition the RB protein imposes by activating kinases that phosphorylate it. Free of RB protein inhibition, cells begin to produce cyclins and CDK, past the G1 checkpoint, and proceed through the cell cycle. Figure 11.22 summarizes the types of genes that can cause cancer when mutated. Synopsis The progress of mitosis is regulated by the interaction of two key classes of proteins, cyclin-dependent protein kinases and cyclins. Some growth factors accelerate the cell cycle by promoting cyclins and CDKs, others suppress it by inhibiting their action.